Hey there everybody, T-Shirt Booth here for gshelper.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to use writable tables to make a trail uh, like Angry Birds. Now I really need you to use your imagination here and just picture a nice little Angry Birds scene here and then your slingshot and you know you're shooting your Angry Birds, alright, there they are. And um, so basically what we're going to want to do is um, make it so when you launch a bird or whatever it is you're launching in my case it's a Super Mario coin um, we want to leave a trail behind um, there's been a lot of different ways to do that and um, now that we have writable tables I just thought it would be nice to do a video using the writable tables to do such thing with uh, zero constraints um, which is really cool now we're gonna go into our rules and you'll see here in my coin um, I have nothing really, um, you know, nothing really uh, too fancy here for the, uh, you know, the cannon and the shooting. I just basically told it to, you know, change velocity just so we can see, um, you know, it actually doing something. Um, because the the whole point of this is just about trails. It's not really about, you know, how it shoots and where it shoots and why it shoots. That's for another time. Um, so let's say you had your game all set up, Angry Birds ready to go, and you just have to add the trail. That's where we're going to start. So the first thing we need is a trail actor. Um, I made this 10 by 10 pixels. You can make yours whatever you want. Um, and what we need to do is create a self attribute here. And we're going to call it index. And um, in this we're going to probably call it uh, my index. Uh, let's see here. My index. And this is going to help us keep track of... Uh, oh, sorry, that needs to be an index. Uh, hold on, index attribute. And we'll call that, again, my index. And this is going to help us keep track of where in the table it's going to choose its location from. And I'm going to choose one for this. Now, I'm going to use about 15 of these bad boys. So I'm going to just drag 15 of them over here. And I'm just going to separate them a bit, just so, uh, like 5, 5, and 5, just so I know when I'm going in and editing the uh, index where I've left off. Uh, and then 5 more. Now it's really important to know that um, this actor is set to not movable. Um, I believe I set it to that. Let me double check. Physics. And it's oh, it's just movable. So you want to you want to make it not movable. Um, the main reason for that is performance. Uh, every movable actor you have on the scene, uh, the device has to account for its position and check to see if it's moving at all times. So you want to make sure that it's not movable. Um, it will not affect what we're doing. So it's perfect. Um, so we have already um, told the index it's one. So we don't need to do the first one. We'll go into the second one, and we're going to change that to two. Third one, change that to three, and so on. And now you can see why I separated them by fives, so you can really, you know, tell where you left off. Five. And I'm just going to pause the video for a second, I'm going to finish those up all the way to 15, and I'll be right back. You should do the same. Alright, so I have all the way to 15 done. Yeah, you should have the same. Now... We need to um, create a table, so we're going to hit home and go into tables and we'll hit plus sign to create a new table and you can name it whatever you want. Uh, for columns we're going to need two columns and column one will be X and column one will be Y and because we have 15 dots we're going to use 15 rows and they're all going to be real attributes and that's it. So we just leave that the way it is. Um, and let's go back into our scene. Now, let's go into our trail actor. And we're going to say, um, I guess the first thing we need to do is go in and create an attribute for our index. So we're going to make an index attribute and we're going to call it dot index. And we'll leave it set to zero. Now we'll go back into our trail actor and we're going to create a rule. And we're going to say when attribute game dot index equals zero, we're going to change attribute self position y because that's up and down to negative twenty. 
And basically what that'll do is every time we make the trail work and it's up in the sky, when we want to have a new trail, we will um, set this to zero and make them all go back down to the bottom where nobody can see them. Um, so it kind of looks like we're getting rid of them, but we're just recycling them. Um, so we're going to make another rule here. And we're going to say when attribute game dot index equals self my index. So when the dot index equals the index of the of each individual actor, we want to change attribute self position x to, and we're going to go pull the value from the table. So we're going to say table cell value. And for table, we'll choose the table name that we have. Uh, I didn't rename it, so it's just index one. Uh, for row, we're going to use self my index, so it's going to pull from the row of its own index, and then x column is one. Now I'm just going to select that and hit the Alt Option button and drag down uh, to make a copy. And now I'm going to change this to self position y. And for this, I'm going to change just the um, the column to 2, because that's where our Y uh, information is. So that's pretty much all we need for the trails. Um, now we need to record the um, actual X and Y locations of um, our Angry Bird or our Ball or whatever it is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Ball. And I have a bunch of things here. That just basically says to collide with wall. Um, this tells it to accelerate down for gravity, change velocity, and collide with walls. Um, what we're going to want to do is, because we don't, we don't want to shoot more than one ball at a time, we're going to go into our attributes, our game attributes, and we're going to create a new one, a boolean. And we'll call this can shoot. And we'll put a checkbox in here so it, it knows it can shoot. And in our shooter, um, right now I have when touch is pressed, you know, shoot ball. So whatever you have that shoots it, what you'll want to do is you'll want to hit uh, change attribute game can shoot to false. And I'm going to go into my angry bird. And I'm going to have it when it hits the wall, I'm going to change attribute game can shoot to true and this basically just allows me to be able to shoot something um, oh hold on I have something wrong here uh, shoots to true oh uh, no let's see here shooter touches press can shoot to false oh I'm in a way shooter uh, when touch is pressed we want to say and attribute game can shoot is true so there we go so now we should only be able to shoot one at a time and then once it hits the wall we'll be able to shoot again so that's perfect okay so we're gonna go back into our ball and I'm just gonna shrink this here and now we gotta start recording um, the X and Y locations of of the actor so um, we're gonna we're gonna create a rule and because we only have 15 dots to work with, we're going to say when attribute game dot index is less than 15. And then we're going to put a timer in here. And we'll say every 0 0.1 seconds run to completion. We're going to change attribute. And we'll change uh, game dot index to game dot index plus one um, so this will basically control you know um, the first index uh, dot and then the next index dot and the next index and so on and so on and so on till we hit 15 and now so once we've changed the dot index to one we also want to change the table value of location one so for our table we'll choose our table for row, we're going to use self. Um, no, we'll use the game one. We'll use game dot index, uh, and that's that. Basically, tells it what row to start adding information to, 
And then for column, for X, we're going to use one. And I'm just going to hit the plus sign over here because we need two of these. And then for Y, we'll use two. And then for the value, we're going to use self position X. And for the Y, we'll use self position Y. So what's that doing is basically saying when index is one, we're going to go to the table, we're going to choose row one, and we're going to change column one and two to the X and Y value of where this ball is. And we're going to keep doing that every 0 0.1 seconds all the way till index equals 15. Um, let's see where we are at this. Uh, there we go. So basically, um, it made the trail. Um, it didn't use all the dots that went here. Um, so now what we need to do is um, make it so they all come back here. So, um, so let's hit back and go into our shooter. And we have when touch is pressed. What we're going to do is change attribute right at the top of this. And we're going to change game dot index to zero. So basically what's going to happen is, if you remember correctly, um, we have a rule on our trail that says when dot index equals zero, change location to minus 20. So now I'll hit preview. And we have our trail there. So now when I hit it again, all these red dots are going to come way down here where you don't see them. And then they start being used again. So now you basically have a trail with zero constraints um, showing the path of the trajectory of your bird and where it went. And um, you can use this in many different ways. Um, it shouldn't be too hard on performance. It's only 15 um, actors and they're not movable, so you should be pretty good. Uh, you may be even able to add more, you know, uh, 20, 25. It just depends on your game and what you have going. But um, this is a great start. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment in the forums. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Head on over to gshelper.com. You'll be able to, um, underneath the video, hit the download link and download this demo and play with it, do what you want with it. And um, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, rate it thumbs up, and um, I'll see you guys in the next video.